Hello there, MKJ here. Welcome to this workshop. All right, I'm just going to outline two things that I'm going to do during this workshop. The first thing is I'm going to show you how I strategize and some of the key points in building a highly effective webinar chatbot, a chatbot that helps um, client, uh, coaches, course creators, you know, agency owners who do anyone who does a webinar and offers a webinar for their to promote their services or their products, how they can use a chatbot to really enhance st strategically and uh, significantly enhance the show up rate uh, on their webinar. All right. So that's number one. First thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is then to say, all right, if you now have that skill, so most of you who might want this information um, have the skill of building chatbots already. And all I'm doing is uh, getting in some of the details of how I might use that skill to really serve a client. So now you have that skill. Now, how are you going to take that skill and that solution, a webinar chatbot, and build it into a business? Okay, not just offer it here and there and whoever might uh, might come your way, but actually be strategic about building a business. Okay, so those are the two things I am going to handle today and I'm going to train on today in this workshop. All right, so let's just dive into thing one. <laughs> how do you do, how do you build a chatbot? How do you figure out um, how to strategically get higher results, higher show up rates for your clients from a webinar or possibly a challenge as well. Challenge is very similar, all right? So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm just gonna take you through uh, some of the details that I typically do. All right, so you're seeing my screen. It's a, it's a drawing, I use Google Drawings to actually develop a strategy first. So let's say a client comes to me and says, all right, I already have, um, I do a weekly live webinar and um, I want to get more people to show up. Right now, my show up rate is uh, 18%, 20%, something like that. That's kind of standard. And I want to try and get more people because I've realized I'm putting all this money into ads, getting all these people to register, and only 15 or 20% of them show up. And then I have to chase them on the back end, which I do. And I have some email automations, but nobody's opening my emails. So um, I feel like all those people I spent money on to get to register for the webinar, I'm losing 80% of them. Okay, so that's why the person is coming going, there's got to be a better way, there's got to be a better way. So I'm going to start with that and go, all right, tell me uh, how you typically do your webinar now, where are you finding your clients, right? So we're going to do webinar strategy. Okay, first off, Facebook ads are pretty much standard. Also, YouTube ads are starting to kick in. Also, TikTok ads. Okay, these are three of the basic um, lead generation strategies for most people who do webinars. Okay, so uh, that's where we start. Okay, oops. All right, now we're going to do a conversation. All right, so right now it's email, and lots of them also do lots of DMs. Okay, that's a that's a, a trend right now is uh, coaches using DMs to try and get clients. Okay, I, I get it; it's working for a lot of people, but it's a very manual, very labor intensive, uh, and not really scalable. So, unless you use some of the other tools that I'm using right now, like Zero Work. Okay, we can talk about that if you want um, in terms of building a business. But I'm telling you, there are ways that you can DM at scale. But right now, that's not what they're using. They're just sending DMs or having their staff do it. So usually in the conversation, me and what I mean by the conversation, I mean pre-webinar, uh, during webinar or reminder webinar to show up and post webinar. Those are the, that's the conversation. And you know what those are. Pre-webinar is getting people excited. Thank you for joining. Thank you for registering, all that good stuff. Uh, and then uh, getting them to be excited to show up. And then the reminder webinar is actually having them show up. And then the post-webinar is, all right, buy. <laughs> buy my thing, right? Okay, so that's usually what they're using right now. And we're going to add chatbots to that, right? Or conversational design. Because I can even go in, I've even gone into my clients' emails and uh, really tighten them up to be able to ha handle any one of those three categories. 
Um, and then we're talking about uh, the conversion. And the conversion is gonna happen on whatever their sales platform is. Okay, so that's really the three key ingredients to a successful webinar, all right? So we're gonna handle this middle piece, right? Uh, we, this is really the part of the webinar structure that we can impact. Um, most of the other parts we can't impact. I'm not gonna, if I'm, if I'm going to actually be very strategic with my skill, and my skill is conversational design, I could go in and help write a customer sales page. I could go in and help uh, structure or write their order forms. And I'm talking about people who are on um, ClickFunnels or GHL, those kinds of places. Those are, that's where your order forms and your sales pages will be. And also your registration pages. Um, but I can't really, I, I can't go into their, I'm not going to go into their Stripe account and create a uh, payment portal, right? That's hopefully they can do that. Those are the things that I can do, but I am really good. And this chatbot skill is really good when applied to that middle piece, that messy middle of actually trying to get people to take action and show up to things. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. And I'm going to specifically deal with chatbots in that. And so I'm going to have to think, all right, how am I going to structure this? Well, I already have the beginning part right here. The, the three sections of trying to get someone uh, to show up to a webinar and then possibly buy, those are the three sections that I am going to start with in my chatbot. Okay, so let's uh, go on and expand this a bit and say, all right, how am I going to do this? All right, what is this going to look like? Okay, uh, so we can tighten this up. Make this a bit smaller. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to remind myself what I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to bold this because really this is our key. Okay. So that's exactly what I do. I'm going to start with, all right, my pre-webinar messages. Okay. Whatever those are. Um, and then I'm going to do... Okay, and then you know where I'm going, right? Okay, that's really it. We have three sections, three ways that we can communicate with people. And now way, the way I can look at that in uh, ManyChat, because I typically use ManyChat, the way I can look at that in ManyChat is, okay, how am I going to move people through that process? Um, the pre-webinar is really simple because that's the welcome message, right? So let's put that in here. Okay, so we've got a welcome message, which is immediately triggered whenever someone subscribes to that bot, right? If there's a link, uh, a ref URL or uh, any other of the growth tools that you might want to use, when they immediately come into the bot, this message will be the first one that's uh, that's actually sent. It's welcome, thank you, all that kind of stuff. Thank you for registering. Usually I'm going to offer some kind of a lead magnet in addition to the webinar. So there's a workbook that goes along with it or a PDF that they're going to need to uh, use or that's going to help them in whatever it is they're doing. Um, so that's part of that welcome the uh, uh, webinar attendee for how this is going to all work and what's going to happen next. So from that, I would go from the, in the welcome message, since we're trying to set up this relationship, there are a few things that I need to ask for, right? A couple of my clients, some of my clients are going to uh, typically um, collect emails in a registration form. Okay. So that's still kind of standard. Not a lot of uh, the people I work with anyway, are actually taking and using Facebook ads and going straight into a bot, okay? Most of them have been burned by Facebook before in that capacity, so they're not gonna try it again. They're not gonna put all their eggs in Facebook's basket um, in the sense that they're gonna keep the communication just on chatbots. 
uh, they're going to definitely diversify and have SMS and email as the main form of communication. So in that welcome message, we need to have, let's see. Okay, we're going to ask them to verify their email that they use to register. Okay. Um, then we're going to ask some of my clients do this. Um, okay. And okay, the recurring notification, multiple time notification. This is what we're going to use and we're going to do daily. Okay. You can do daily for 30 days, um, weekly for three months or monthly for a year. And as long as you get that permission from them, uh, that's what you can do. And you can message them daily. So for challenges and webinars, especially live webinars or evergreen webinars, usually most of my clients who do evergreen webinars have a, a particular cart close timing. So most of them are four days to seven days when the cart's gonna close and that's all automated. So we need to communicate with people for at least those seven days of the cart and also maybe a day or two, or, you know, maybe the day before. Um, so maybe seven to eight days, we need to be able to communicate with people each day to get them to show up to the, um, the Evergreen webinar and also to uh, have the follow-up messages to be able to hopefully purchase whatever it is we're trying to sell in that webinar. So those are the main things that I need to get from, uh, from the attendees or registrants. Uh, and then after that, it's going to, uh, I'm going to give possibly some information. Maybe there's a, um, a lead magnet or an ebook or something like that, that I might want to give people. Um, so I'm going to have that maybe, especially if this is a live webinar, then that's what's going to happen in the live webinar. Um, you have to wait for a particular date. And people, so typically with my clients who do live webinars, they're usually doing Facebook ads um, anywhere from three days to a week ahead of the actual live webinar. And so from that three days to a week, people could be subscribing to the sequence anytime in that process. So you don't want to have like five days worth of pre-webinar messages because some of those people won't get all those messages. And by the time the person who signs up on day one, when the ads first start, they're going to be inundated with a message every day. They're not going to really think that it's very special to show up to the webinar. So you want to make sure that the content that you offer is valuable. Okay. There's a reason you're interrupting their day. I know this is counterintuitive to a lot of marketing, but I'm telling you right now, if you want highly engaged, um, registrants who show up, then you don't want to bother them. You want to only give them value. Okay. So, and I've worked with people who've done challenges where they're basically sending some message every day before the challenge for like three or four days before the challenge, then every day during the challenge and actually twice a day, many of them um, during the challenge. And then of course, by the time they get done the follow-up they're you know, they're done with messages. <laughs> so be careful. All right, so now we're going to do the value. Okay, and that's what we're going to offer. All right, so this is what we're, we're talking about. This is how we're going to make this uh, in the beginning before we're even actually doing the live webinar. This is how we're going to try and get um, people to understand what it is that uh, this particular coach or course creator does and can feel um, compelled to show up to the training, okay? So now once we've done that, now we're gonna send our message that invites people to the actual webinar, okay? And this is just the webinar invite. This is, hey, I'm, I'm going live in 10 minutes or I'm live now um, to share with you the XYZ training that I'm doing or the XYZ webinar that I'm doing. Um, I can't wait to see you. Okay. That's really just the single, single message. Um, and part of that might be um, after the webinar invite, you might have um, maybe five hours later or however many, however much time frame is realistic. So let's say like right now I'm doing this live at 1 PM Pacific. So I'm not going to wait five hours. That would be 6 PM right? So it might be maybe two hours later, I'm going to share the replay. Okay. So maybe there are two messages in that immediate webinar um, invite message. And then after that, 
uh, daily until the cart closes, you're going to send post webinar messages. Um, and typically these are going to be, um, I'll just share with you uh, how we typically do it. Let me show you what I mean. So um, the first one is typically replay again. Okay, that's pretty standard. Uh, replay plus testimonials. Um, then we're going to go, the second message is going to be um, replay plus sales page. Okay. And then we're going to do We're done with pretty much the replay. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. So now we're doing sales page plus right. And then we're doing so we've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five days of follow-up messages. That's kind of uh, typical. It could be less. If it's only four days, then you're going to eliminate this here, this testimonials, and you're going to have the sales page in order form in your message. I typically use my client's email series that they've done. I work with clients whose email series has been successful. Um, at least they're making a decent amount every month. Typically, they're making at least um, 50000 a month or higher from their webinars. So if they already have that, they already have that worked out. They have to. Um, they're not just selling that on the live webinar. They're also doing follow-up. So out of that email series, then I'll take that and translate it into chatbot copy, and I will follow that same system. But we obviously get much more um, response, a much higher up open rate and click-through rate through Messenger than they ever could in email. Okay. So there is our strategy. If we don't have a strategy, we're just building a bot to build a bot and say, hey, show up to my webinar and that's it, okay? This is the strategy for most of my clients, okay? So next I'm going to come in and I'm just going to go through and here's, here's what I would typically do. I would create a sequence for each of these, um, for each of these uh, sections this pre-webinar, the actual webinar itself, and the post-webinar, I would create a sequence in ManyChat for each of those. Uh, and right now I'm in my um, Messenger Funnels account, okay? I could go into my Bot Academy account. I could go into my Mary Catherine Johnson account, my webinar chat, any, any of my any of my ManyChat accounts, I could go in and show you, but I'll go ahead and show you from Messenger Funnels. So I'm gonna go to Automation and I'm gonna go to Sequences and you'll see lots of sequences. And I'm going to start a new one that says live webinar pre, okay? And I'm going to add those pre messages. And I'm just going to start with that, this pre, this welcome message. And this welcome message, again, I'm just going to ask for those details, verify email, give me your phone number and the, I call it the NTN, but many chats using an RTN. So I'm going to use a trigger and typically because I'm going to come from many different sources, I'll use a ref URL. Whoops, there it is. And I'll say this is, you know, X client um, webinar, whatever the name of the webinar is. Okay, so I'll do that custom parameter. Right? I'm not going to do that right now. And then I'm going to choose my platform. You know, in mine, I'm going to start with Messenger uh, because again, Messenger Funnels doesn't have an Instagram account attached to it. So you could also add this on Instagram if, if you have a, an Instagram person that uh, has a pretty uh, large following on Instagram. But I'm just going to stick with Messenger since that's where we were. You'll also notice that there is um, WhatsApp and uh, Telegram are also uh, added to ManyChat. All right, so I'm going to do this message, a welcome, and thank you.
Okay, I'm just doing this as a standard to let you know you need to welcome people and actually talk to them uh, about what it is they have signed up for. And then uh, typing delay. And then I'm going to get right into, um, actually, I don't need that. I'm going to get right into asking for. Now, here are the two things that you have to play around with. Here is part of this iteration that we do. You need to find out which one uh, gets the highest First off is the highest priority, and secondly, has the highest chance of getting completed, either asking for email or asking for permission to message daily. So to me, the first thing I need is permission to message daily, because without that, I'm done. I can't message any of these other messages. I can't send. I can't send anything after this message if I don't have their permission to do so. So email, yeah, that's great, but I would start with making sure that I have their permission to message them. So the first thing I would do is come down here to notification request. And the first thing it's gonna ask me is which one or which one do I wanna use? And I'm gonna come down here and I'm just gonna use this um, NTN promo, it's daily. I set it up as a training that I did on YouTube. So I'm just gonna use that. So just imagine that that is the topic and you need to be specific about the topic. So if you're talking about webinar reminders and replays, say that that's the topic, webinar reminders and replays, because you need to be specific as to what you're asking permission for. You can't just lie, okay? So say, imagine this says webinar reminders and replays, and then I'm going to enter a title and I'm going to remind them specifically of what it is they're signing up to get reminders on. So um, click And it'll tell me whether there are too many letters because this, this number here, it says I have nine more characters. That isn't always true. <laughs> so you'll have to see if that's the case. Okay. So I'm going to have do that. And I'm always going to um, add an action and I'm going to tag that they clicked that button. I want to know everybody who clicks that button. So I'm going to say clicked. Uh, let me see. How did I do it before? Okay, there we go. NTN want webinar, right? I can use that one or NTN daily. Um, so uh, yeah, so I would I would be specific. I'm just going to use one of them I already have so that I don't have to keep keep making more tags because I've got tons. So NTN want webinar. Okay, so now that tells me that this person has given me everyone who clicks that button. I get told that they actually have given me their permission to message daily. Okay, and then after that. I'm going to go to the next thing and it might be email, it might be whatever, right? I'm gonna ask them for their email address, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much um, sticking with not using the email reply type because that automatically um, gives their Facebook email as uh, an option to just click that button. And I don't want that because typically 50% of those emails are not the emails that people use to purchase. So this makes attribution more difficult so that you can tell if this person purchased who's been through Messenger. And I work with lots of other agencies that are also serving my clients because my clients are large. So I'm not doing all their Facebook ads. I'm not building their funnels. I'm not doing all those things. So they may, they usually have some type of revenue share with each uh, person helping them in this webinar. And we need to attribute each sale to the right person. So I don't want to fight with people. I'm not going to say, no, that's my client or that's my lead or whatever. We don't do that. But it, to make it easier for ourselves, I don't want to give them the opportunity to just um, lazily click that button that has their Facebook email in it, because most of the time they're not going to purchase with that email. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it text and I'm going to say, um, thanks. something like that. And then I'm going to also perform an action and I'm also going to add a tag and I could also use a custom field. But if I use the custom field for email, it's going to change that type to email. So um, I would typically uh, do something like that. There we go. Okay. 
And so there's that. And you can also do all of these normal actions. If they haven't responded within a time, I definitely usually, uh, I definitely change that back to one time instead of three. I don't want them being bothered. Um, less is more to me. I don't, I'm, I'm not a, a marketer who keeps bugging people. Okay. But we still get really good results. So you don't have to do that. Um, okay. So you can do this if they don't respond. And I typically change this that if they don't respond within like five minutes, then I'm going to send them another, another message to remind them to give me their email. I usually do this for this one. Okay. So in this, uh, in the NTN, I will I definitely add a time delay and I'll check to see if they have this tag in a condition. And if they don't, right, I will remind them. So let's do a smart delay and I'm going to go minutes, say five minutes, they could get distracted. Um, and then I'm going to do a condition. And in this condition, I'm going to find out if they have that tag. Okay. And if they do, I'm not going to do anything. If they don't, I'm going to remind them. Okay. So actually, I'm going to come back up here. And I like to just copy this message and edit it rather than start from scratch. So if they don't, I'm going to come here. I'm going to say, add some emojis in here. I can do the praying or please, or typically I'm going to go, yikes, I need your permission. And then I'll also point down. Okay. And I'll give them one more chance. And if they do, this is going to come back up here and add the tag and then continue the sequence. Okay. All right. So those are the, those, I just, I, I'm not going to build the whole bot. We don't have time to do that, but I'm going to show you how these work, right? So um, I've got that first message. Then I'm going to have the webinar invite, which is basically, hey, I'm live and now, or I'm live in 10 minutes. Don't forget to join me. And the button is the link. And that button will also have an action, making sure you tag everyone who has clicked that link. Okay. And then the post webinar messages, again, same thing. Each of those messages is going to have, uh, be in a sequence. So, um, so that we don't have to worry about when people come into this flow. Um, I can actually take all the people and not invite them, not send them to the sequence of messages that has the webinar invite until right before the actual webinar starts. So typically that's how I use that. I use custom fields or I use a broadcast message to subscribe everyone to the next sequence, the next actual message sequence and unsubscribe them from the previous sequence. That's just a technical way. That's a communication way so that you don't have to um, watch or worry about it. Um, it's just, you have a, a rule or a um, broadcast or specific custom fields timed to the actual uh, user's time zone so that each of these sequences are uh, subscribed to at the appropriate time. So if we're going, the webinar is going to be on a Tuesday at noon central, then Tuesday at noon central or Tuesday at 1150 AM central, you're gonna want everyone who's in that pre-webinar sequence to be subscribed to the webinar invite sequence so that everyone gets that message at the same time and they all get the message, hey, I'm going live in 10 minutes, right? That's how I make sure that every webinar invite gets sent at the appropriate time, all right? And then same thing can happen with the post webinar, all right? So this is, you have to have a strategy. You have to think about how this is gonna happen, use the copy from your client, and then uh, put it together in a bot. And so then I would take this, um, this, this sequence, this particular message. Um, let's see, do I have this named? I don't think I do. Okay, so it's telling me, see, I told you, this said that, that had, I had nine more characters, but I don't. It's telling me I have too many characters. 
So I have to decrease. Let's see if that does it. Well, it's still telling me I've got too many characters. It says I got 19. Frustrating. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. So now this message is done. Um, I don't have a name for it. Oh, that's right. It's in the sequence. So we can go straight to that sequence. There we go. And there's that message. So this one is gonna be immediately, and they're gonna get that, um, and I'm gonna name it welcome. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're gonna go and we're gonna name, we're gonna do the next sequence. So th that's how we've already gone through that. You're going to go to and create the sequence um, live webinar, right? Webinar live. And then you're going to create the sequence uh, live webinar post. All right. And then each of those messages are there. And then you'll be able to move people through that process all at the same time. Okay. That is it. That's how we do it. And that, that RTN or NTN, whatever the heck it's called, that daily message reminder, that daily message permission is now your friend, because if you've been in this chatbot world since two, since January of 2017, like I have, you remember the days when we could just message anytime for any reason. We can now message daily for a specific reason. And I'm very happy about that because there were too many marketers that were just spamming people and didn't really care, just wanted to try and make a quick buck. That's not, that's not what has allowed me to stay in this industry. Making a quick buck is not what has allowed me to create success for the last five years as a conversational designer. What has allowed me to create success in the last five years as a conversational designer is the second thing I'm gonna share with you today. And that is how to actually take this skill that I just dabbled in, right? I showed you the, I gave you my strategy that I use for my live webinar clients. Now my evergreen webinar clients, it's same, same thing, same strategy. We do the pre-webinar, uh, which is the welcome message because this is uh, evergreen. So right when they sign up, we're going to send them to the webinar, right? Uh, the, the, it's basically a broadcast room. So we have the pre-webinar. We have the, um, but the, excuse me, the difference is there's no live part. There's only two parts, the pre-webinar and the post-webinar. Same process. Structure that and follow your client's email series. And if they don't have one, I just gave you one. Okay, that's if you're going to do their emails, do them this way. Uh, if you're going to to structure their ClickFunnels account, uh, this is how you're going to structure it. Or your or their GHL, and you're going to add SMS. This is what you're going to use. This structure. So you have that strategy. Now you have a skill. You can help people communicate more effectively and at a deeper level with their prospects when they conduct webinars or challenges. That skill is very valuable. I need to caution you about three things because what'll happen, you'll take that skill and you'll start talking to people about um, how to, that you can help them with chat bots and increase their, here's the standard that I use. I usually say we increase with chat bots the show up rate by at least 30% or an average of 30%. And so you can talk to people who do webinars and ask them, how many people do you have showing up to your webinar now? What percentage of your registrants does that represent? Okay, so if they have typically 20 people showing up to their webinar, you want to know what percentage of the people who registered that 20 people is. Okay, so if they have 100 people register and they have 20 people show up, that's a 20% show up rate. So if you say to them, how much do you sell on that webinar? What percentage of those 20 people do you sell? They'll probably say one out of 20 or two out of 20, right? If that's the case, 
um, then you say to them, if I could get you 30% more people to show up, how many more sales would you make each time you conducted that webinar? That's what you're talking about. You're not saying, how about if I build you a chat bot? So what's the chat bot going to do for me? <laughs> right? The difference between those two things I'm going to talk about right now, because these are the things, if you say, how about if I build you a chat bot? That's one of the thing is, one of the things that will keep you in what I call the revenue roller coaster. You might get a client because you might talk to them about how great ManyChat is or Chatmatic or Mobile Monkey or whatever you use um, does the same thing. Uh, you might say how great it is and they might go, okay, I'll, I'll take a chance. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate. I want more people. Sounds good. Let me try. That's one of the mistakes that after you get that client, you will then find the next time you have to find another client. You won't have, you won't be actually building a business. You will be a, a freelancer and you'll have a skill, uh, but you're not actually building a business. Okay. So here's how you build a business, right? So we just talked about the actual uh, structure of building, taking that chatbot building skill and um, how you can actually get results for clients perform that are doing live webinars. Okay. Now let me show you how you can take that skill and actually build a business out of it. Okay. All right. So these are the three steps to getting off of that revenue roller coaster now that you have that skill. And here's my promise. It's going to be quick. I'm not going to belabor this. This is going to be one, two, three. My promise for this time of this workshop is if you implement what I show you today, you will finally get unstuck because you have the tools to profit from any change in tech and business now and in the future. So I just showed you a technical skill and how you can take a strategy and apply that to building a chatbot or using a technical skill. When that skill changes, you still need to, to make money from that skill. This is how you're going to do it. This is how you're not going to get stuck into just selling the skill, just selling the tool. All right. Number one, the number one thing that you can do is stop just taking any client. Okay. And you're looking at me like, MKJ, what the heck? I need money. I have to take any client. I get it. Been there, done that. And it always bites me in the ass. So listen, from experience, from an old lady, chatbot mom, stop taking any client. I just showed you a strategy for webinars. You need a strategy for your skill and your business. And that strategy starts. You already have the skill. You already know the solution. Webinars. Okay. Now you need to get specific. Which niche, which industry, what type of business do you want to work with? That's what I'm talking about. Once you niche down, so with me and webinars, there's lots of people doing webinars. I specifically work with coaches and course creators and membership or mentorship mastermind people. But not everybody, not all masterminds, right? I'm not going to uh, work with um, a mastermind group that helps realtors. Not my niche. I'm not going to work with a mastermind group that uh, sells insurance and helps insurance agents. Not my niche. I want to work with uh, coaches and course creators and masterminds that help people build businesses or market or make lifestyle changes. That that's I love that kind of of work. So those are the people I'm going to go after. So who are those people? Those people are mindset coaches, uh, performance coaches, leadership coaches, um, business building coaches, uh, coaches who help coaches market, right? Those kinds of people. That's my, those are my niches. Those are the people I love to work with. Those are the people I know I can get results for because they have been my clients. So you need to do that. You need to find what niche, what industries, do you want to serve with your skill, webinar chatbot, challenge chatbot, and the solution you've provided and the results that you can help people get? Now, who are your people? That's what I'm talking about. Because when you do that, you, you, I, the, the typical responses and the objections to choosing a niche, and if you are taking these objections and you're like, whatever, you're already gone. You're already out of here. You're stop, you've stopped watching me anyway. But if you're still here, 
the reason, the thing I'm going to tell you, and the biggest fear people have with doing this is that they're like, yeah, but MK, now I'm not going to be able to serve anybody, everybody. I, I need everybody. I need lots of people because we're all used to having huge leads. Lead gen is like do ads and get tons and tons of people. And I'm not going to have all that. <sighs> Listen, please, and trust. Trust it works because it does. Because every one of my students does this and gets immediate results. Once you narrow, once you narrow your focus, you can be focused. You can speak the language. You can offer exactly what they need. You can understand their business at a deeper level instead of trying to understand real estate agents or trying to understand insurance agents or trying to understand restaurants and then trying to understand a coach and then trying to go into pet food. All of these different people have different needs and different difficulties. When you focus on one, you can do those later, but just get this thing built, okay? And the way you do that is to stop taking any client and start taking the right client, okay? There you go. That's number one. Number two, after you've done that, and, and I've had many students, yes, yay, MK, this is so much easier. Now I'm building this amazing solution on GHL for restaurants. And it's beautiful. Now, when they finally get in, in front of a restaurant to show them how incredible their solution is, guess what they do? They go into the back end of GHL and start showing the restaurant owner all the cool things you can do in GHL. Stop it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I don't sugarcoat these things. Stop identifying with the tech. So when I'm going to talk to a coach, okay, I'm going to talk to a coach and I'm going to ask them these questions. What is your, how many people do you typically get uh, registered? Where do you find those people? I'm going to do all that discovery. And I'm going to say, okay, how would it be if I got you 30% more people to show up? How much more money would you make on the back end? If you just kept your closing percentage the same, how much more money do you make? They'll tell me. I'm like, awesome. Okay. Never, ever, 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 ever do I go into the back end of ManyChat and go, oh, look at this. Look at this amazing way I've got this set up. I start with this sequence and look, we can get the RTN. And now I, then I go to the live sequence because then I'm selling the tool, the tech. I'm not actually showing them the solution and the results I'm going to get. Okay. If you are identifying with the tech and you want to dive in and I get it because it's comfortable, it makes you feel good because you know it, you can speak to it. It's fun. All those things. I get it. I understand why I used to do it way in the beginning. I used to do that. Let me show you how it works. I got so excited. People don't want to know how it works. A restaurant owner needs to actually focus on their restaurant, not on ManyChat or GHL. They don't care about that. They just want more butts and seats, okay? So when you identify with the tech, then you are no different from any other bot builder. They don't hear beyond, I'm a bot builder. Either they don't know what that is and they say, what's that? Or they've been exposed to someone who built a bot, it crashed for them, did not work, and they're gonna now put that experience onto you. So you are not a bot builder. You are not a GHL expert. You, when you sell to a client, you sell your solution and the results. You don't sell the tech, okay? The reason is because when you identify with the tech, you are easily replaced, easily replaced. There's somebody else. They can go get on Fiverr or Upwork or go to the ManyChat community and look around and find somebody else to build the tech again. You don't want to be that. You want to be the chef. You don't want to be the pan. See that pan that's on fire? <laughs> yeah, that's the tech. That's the tool. A chef knows how to use the pan, knows which pans to use, how to take contents from one pan and put it into another. The chef knows how to use the tool, but it's just a tool to create the incredible result that the chef knows how to create, the mouthwatering meal. So when you say, I'm a bot builder, you're the pan. You're on fire, baby. <laughs> Have fun. That doesn't build a business. That keeps you on the revenue roller coaster. You need to be the chef. And the chef says, 
oh my gosh, I've got this incredible webinar conversational design that I've made that gets clients a 30% increase in show up rate. How does that sound? Would you like me to tell you more about it? Mr. or Ms. Coach, course creator, e-commerce, whatever. That's going to... That's going to have them engage in your conversation as opposed to, oh my gosh, I've got this incredible webinar chat bot. Oh, and it's so cool. It has this RTN and it gets your emails and it makes sure your emails are verified. And I can even get phone numbers and I'm going to go chat bot. I heard that word. Oh, no, tried that. I did that in 2020 and got shut down right before the elections. No reason. We were doing everything fine. We were following the rules and Facebook shut us down and we stopped making money. That's what you're going to run into. But if you're the chef and you talk about the results and the conversation that you can help create to get their clients to get to know them at a deeper level faster, then you're now the chef. Be the chef, not the pan. Don't identify with the tech. Be the expert that you are. You have a skill. If the client had that skill, They'd be doing it themselves. They wouldn't be talking to you. So embrace your expert status and be the chef. Okay. All right. I'm done. <laughs> all right. Number three, maximize all your possible leads. All right. So, so many people use, um, it, well, let me just say this. Most of the students that I help come in with the idea of prospecting that they're going to do some type of cold prospecting. Because they're like, nobody in my network needs a chat bot. I don't know anybody. All my, all my friends on Facebook are all bot builders because that's what I've been doing. So where am I going to find people? I get it. So you want to start with cold lead generation. You want to get an email list, buy an email list, or go into groups and start just you know saying to people, I can build you a chat bot or who needs, who needs webinars, 30% show up rate. All those things, I've done all those things. I haven't uh, bought an email list, but I go into groups. And I would ask people that, or I would do a search in the groups asking uh, or searching who's looking for information, the keywords, chat bot or many chat or email marketing or something like that. And then I would build relationships with those people. But no matter what I do, I'll start cold, right? If I don't have anybody, um, I'll start cold and then I will build relationships. So you need to use both cold outreach and warm outreach or cold outreach that actually gets you to relationships. And I've already mentioned one way that you can build relationships, go into groups, answer questions, and please do this without selling. Don't go into the group and somebody says, oh, you know, I can't figure out how to do many chat. I'm trying to, trying to, you know, have this picture sent and I don't know where the picture is, how, how to put the picture in. Okay. You can help with that. So if you go, hey, I can help you with that, and you show them, do a little quick little loom video, which is what I did. I'd go into many chat and I'd say, here's the thing, and here's the image. All you have to do is click it, and it'll come up there, and then you drag it. I'll show you the little arrows. You drag it up to where you want it to be. You click it and, and upload it from your computer. Boom, now you got your picture. I hope that helps, and shut up. Don't try and sell. Hey, I can build it for you. Just message me. I'd love to do this for you. I'd handle it for you. You're selling, because I'm going to tell you why. When you go into groups or do these kinds of things, you answer questions and you do it without expectation of a sale or trying to spam yourself or sell yourself, the person that you're going to possibly get as a client is not the person who asked the question. Let me repeat that. The person you possibly get as a client is not the original person whose question you're answering. It's everybody else who's watching that. Those are your potential clients. The person who asked the question wanted to ask the question because they want to do it by themselves. Okay, that's cool. Let them do it by themselves. But by answering that question, by the goodness of your heart and actually showing you're a compassionate person who wants to help, will show everyone else looking and watching that you have an expertise. And all those other people that are watching who don't want to do it themselves are going to potentially reach out to you. I've got more clients, not from the person who asked the question, but from the people watching in the Facebook group, which there are lots. I've gotten more clients from the people watching than I've ever gotten. I've never gotten a client from answering the original question. It's always from the people watching and the way you do it out of the goodness of your heart, trying to help another human being with your expertise. 
Now, I've also had people reach out to me from that, from that kind of a question and me answering it, asking me to train them on how, how can you train me on how to do that? Do you have a course? <laughs> right? So there are people watching when you do that. And when you try and sell yourself, they are turned off because then they know, oh, this person's just trying to make money. They don't care. They're not really trying to help. I don't want to go talk to that person because all they're going to do is trying to sell me something. Okay. That's what I mean. There's one way. So you can go into um, groups and answer questions. Um, you can go uh, to conferences. That's a huge way to get clients. Very, very strong way to get clients. Um, you can do lead gen like on LinkedIn or Facebook. Usually what I do on Facebook is I'll go and I'll put in the search term in the search bar on Facebook for whatever I'm looking for. Let's say I'm looking for health coaches and I want to help health coaches. Well, I'll go put that health coaches in the search bar and it'll bring up a whole bunch of, you know, all or people or posts or pages or whatever. And so once I do that search term, I'm going to choose pages. And then what, and why don't I just show you this? All right. Let me stop the screen sharing and then I'll get on Facebook real quick and I'll show you a key way to try and find clients on Facebook. Um, yeah, that's really valuable. Okay. Let me share my screen again and here we go. All right. So, um, here is Facebook and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to search for health coaches. Okay. And you see this list, all posts, people, photos, right? And I'm going to come down here to pages because I want to find the pages for health coaches and I'll show you why. So, you know, a chat bot has to be attached to a Facebook business page. Okay. So I'm looking for the people who have Facebook business pages with the category health coach. So here, here's health coach, Kate, uh, five out of five. She has 7.9 thousand followers, uh, 10 posts in the last two weeks. So that's almost a post a week or a day. This is a perfect potential client for a chat bot. Because here I'm going to look. All right, here's the health coach. She's on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest. And let's take a look. Okay, nine minutes ago, she looks like she's got probably a YouTube channel because this is a typical YouTube thumbnail, right? Uh, there's probably a reel, right? Okay, so she's a health coach. And I'm going to look. She doesn't have the message button. Okay, there I'm going to look for the message button. I don't have a message button here. Let's see if she has it down here. Typically it's, um, nope, she doesn't have a message button. Bummer, really big bummer because she would probably be a really good candidate for a chat bot if she had the message button, if she was using it already. And most of these coaches are gonna try and use the, the DMs. So they're gonna have the message button. So I'm gonna look for the message button, okay? She doesn't have it, let's go back. Uh, 113,000. So here's going to be a diff difficult one because uh, 113,000 followers, she probably has a team handling her DMs. Okay. But let's check. She has message there. That's up here. Yeah, there wasn't a message. So let's check and see what happens. So I'm going to look for this person. Okay. Sarah Regan, she obviously has a, a persona or a personal brand, life coach specializing in mindset and health. Awesome. She just messaged or posted two hours ago. Good. All right. So she has the message button. Let's see what happens when I click it. Okay. No chat bot. No automation whatsoever. And the reason I know that is because if there was a chat bot, this wouldn't be here. This would be a message inviting us to click the get started button. If there's a get started button, I know there's a chat bot attached to this, uh, this page. So this would be a, probably a pretty good um, potential chatbot bot um, client. So I would probably, what I would do is I would message. Let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, let's see what happens here. I want to go check out her stuff before I send a message because I don't want to send a lie, right? Let's see if she has it. Okay, 
The website doesn't work. That doesn't look good. All right. Let's see if there's any other. Let's see if that one works. Nope, bummer again. All right, so if I could find some, some details, then I would say something like, hey, Sarah and team, I'm enjoying consuming right? Something about them. And if I could find a particular post or a particular thing on their website that spoke to me, then I would say that. I would put that in there. I loved your blank recipe or whatever, right? Thanks. Uh, thanks for the, you know, continued wellness prescriptions. Keep it up, right? I would send a message like that to see what response I got and who responded, okay? Because that's going to tell me who's monitoring that, if anybody. Um, and then I would go on from there. All right, so that's without anyone. So let's see if I can find someone, 120,000. Let's see if good old Chris has this. Aha. Uh, yes, I tried this back in February. Um, actually, this was part of a bot that I was building. And so hello was the basics of the bot. And as you can see, nobody responded. Um, I would, obviously that was because of a bot. So I would uh, send something different. Uh, so it looks like this person does... Um, food in terms of health coach. Uh, yep, there we go. So I would specifically go to a, a particular recipe or type of food. Um, let's see. All right. Not that. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, so what are they doing? Ah, so he's got a, a supplement line. Mm -hmm. So I, this is what I would do. I, was, I would look at the, the content, orange chicken salad. Okay, yay, love that. Look at this, 86 um, likes, All right? So I'm gonna do this. And... thinking of something else. Okay, that's it. And that would probably get a response, okay? So I would find out how long it might take to get that response, all right? And then maybe start a conversation with whoever's doing that. So I wanna show, uh, let's see if this person has it. Nope. I want to show you what a bot looks like. Okay, this one did. So this one had a get started button, but nothing else after that. So it had a get started button, because you can see this was same time frame, February 10th, 2020. Um, and I clicked the get started button and nobody did, nothing happened. There was no automation to it. So now I could come back to this person because I was doing a training just like this. I could come back to this person and uh, basically email help at and say, hey, you have a bot attached to your page, but I couldn't get any information. Can I help? And I would talk about other clients that I've done. So these are ways you can get leads. These are places you could go to get leads. All right. All right, you can do cold lead generation and turn it into a relationship because people are gonna buy from you when you have a solution, not when you just build a bot, all right? This is what I teach. So if I've talked about these things and it sounds like something you could benefit from, I'm starting a mastermind next month, beginning of the month. I'm taking calls with people to see if they qualify. I have a, uh, an assessment that you can go through to see if you qualify. This is the process. It's laid out right there, the success path. 
Um, niche, we already talked about that. What is your strategy? What kind of copy are you going to use? What's the tech you're going to use or the pan that you're going to use? What about prospecting, organic content, relationships, warm outreach? Then we go into sales. No, you're not going to do a demo. You're going to talk about the results. Uh, you're going to have zero expectations that they actually are going to buy, just like I have of you. And you're going to talk about their pains and how your solution solves that. And then you're going to have systems, onboarding systems, delivery of services, stats, communication, all of that is just the systems after the fact. And then you repeat, go back to prospecting, keep on prospecting, do sales, and then onboard clients. It's a, a path that is a circular path. It might be winding, it might back up on itself, it might do all those things, but it is a path. If you do it, you get clients on a consistent basis. It's worked for me. It's worked for every single one of our students. I'm looking for futurists. I'm looking for people who have technical skills, who understand many chat like I just described. You don't have to be an expert uh, or a, you know, a, a many chat certified expert, which the expert test doesn't show that you're an expert. <laughs> um, I want people who understand the skill, that have the skill, they enjoy the skill, they just don't have the solution or the system around the skill to be able to offer it effectively to clients. The, if that's you, then I just want to have a conversation and see how I can help you do it better, faster. If you want to take the assessment, you can go to callmemkj.com slash CEO dash mischief, because I am a mischief maker. Just the way it is. All right. Let me stop this. If you want to take that assessment and possibly have a conversation with me on a call, uh, I would love it. I have no expectations that you join anything. I truly, truly just want to help you take the next step. All right. I hope this helped with the two things that we did together. Number one, talked about the webinar chat bot that's really working for my clients. And number two, how you can take that skill and build it into an actual consistent business. I hope that helped. And I hope to see you next time. Ciao.